Testing. Testing. Can you hear me? <laughs> All right. Let's go. Good. Let's go. First ever podcast with Frozen Xmas, other known as Mr. Cold. Do you have any other names that you would like to go by? Um, I think you know it on the dot there. All right. So, so. obviously, I'm here with that dude, aka that guy, X D. So how are you feeling today? I'm feeling uh, pretty good. What about uh, yourself? I'm feeling fine. Alright, so I got some questions for you. We're just going to jump straight into it. Alright, you ready for this? Alright, so how does being an influencer on other people make you feel? With being an influencer, I think uh, it's quite a difficult job because at the end of the day, you know, you've got to watch what you do on your platform and, you know, I, I, I think you have to agree with me here, but you're a massive role model to the fan base that you have, so you've got to be quite a... Uh, careful with how you put yourself out there. Yeah, that actually brings me to my next question. On, like, how does being an influence on other people make you change, like, your own actions or, like, reflect on your own, like, opinion or judgment? Or, like, how often do you self-censor yourself? I think it has... I think it has to be quite a lot. <clears throat> because if you're very dedicated to being a top influencer on your respectable platform, um, I would really have to say that you have to really second guess yourself all the time, um, but not let that, you know, or don't, don't, you know, long if that makes any uh, sense, obviously. And I think at times, you know, we all have to question ourselves, and I feel like. Uh, you could definitely understand that. Oh yeah, for you sure. Your channel. Oh yeah, for sure. Hmm. If there was so, one thing uh, that you could change. Me. Oh my bad. You gone? <laughs> so I've got a, a question for you then, because obviously okay. we've heard about my point of views on everything. So. For you, personally, being a uh, influencer, and obviously being a, not just an influencer, but being a streamer, and you know, you have to put all that work in, and you know, a lot of the times you'll see that uh, you've got no viewers, or there's no, you don't get any of that attention, what continues to drive you to keep doing what you enjoy? See, I try not to let any of that kind of stuff consume me or overwhelm me. There is moments where I get a little bit, like, you know, sad or whatever when I'm seeing, like, zero viewers or that my video is not doing so good or whatever. But at the end of the day, that can't reflect how you feel about life because, you know, you can't have a good day when you got a lot of views or when you gain a lot of subs. You have to have a good day just by having a good day. You know what I mean? Yeah, I fully understand that. And I feel like, uh, yeah, you have to kind of like, uh, as an influencer, some people portray themselves as a character, but you still kind of like add your like lifestyle into that also, you know? Yeah, I agree. I agree. You try to be like the best of both worlds, to the best of your ability, if that makes any sense. Like Miley Cyrus yeah, and Hannah Montana. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's a perfect example. Um, and I believe you learn so much, you know. Um, I can definitely vouch for that when it comes to this. Because uh, obviously when I first started, uh, my lifestyle was quite different before I came onto this platform, but 
as this channel has gone by, I've grown as a person. I feel like, you know, social media can help you in certain aspects of a mm -hmm. lifestyle. Yeah, I totally agree there. Um, so what would, what would be like your best advice for young people aspiring to become an influencer? I think it's, um, don't lose that kid in you, you know? And yeah. don't, you know, feel stressed or feel any sort of anxiety and just be who you are because you'll find out nine times out of ten that you're quite relatable to other people and that's what will make your, you as a influencer very uh, unique. I agree there. I agree there. See, a lot of people get very confused when they see influencers. They forget that they're also individuals. Do you ever feel like that, like, affects you? Yes, at times. There have been a lot of times where people just treat you like you're not even human. Um, yeah, like you're something else. I think that's... It's bizarre. That's where... That is uh, where obviously people have been diverted in the wrong ways of simply, you know, not treating people right. Because I know me and you, we're quite old and we've lived in a different time where social media wasn't really as big as it is now. And, you know, uh, things were quite different when people were more respectful and, you know, social media is now involved into this. and. Um, it's really took, took a bit of a dark turn, but it still has its positives in some ways. Yeah, I totally see that. Uh, onto the topic of social media, do you ever get, like, influenced by other influencers on social media? Do they ever change, like, your behavior or your thought processes? Like, I'm just going to throw out one, one, one random name, like Andrew Tate, for example. Like, you ever change, like, your views or, like, your ideal ideology or anything like that based off of other influencers, what they're saying or portraying? I would have to actually disagree um, from my perspective, obviously, because I feel like <coughs> being influenced and relating to them is two different kind of, like, things. Um, and I think a lot of the times, if you are influenced, you would 100% agree with what they are saying, which for me, there's a lot of times, for example, with Andrew Tate, I don't always agree with what he says, but there are some things that I can relate to, but I don't... But he hasn't, like, changed your views whatsoever, me. like, in any, like, way, shape, or form? I would say no. Um, because my like views your your views were already there, but they just basically like made them more concrete by somebody else sharing the same views. Yeah, I would have to agree there. Like, um, I see. That Andrew Tate has, you know, allowed me to obviously let my views out a bit more. And, you know, but I wouldn't say that he has influenced me in any way. Um, if we're talking about Andrew Tate. And that was just one random name, though. I'm talking about, like, the whole spectrum on social media. You ever got, like, influenced whatsoever by anyone? No, I think the only, um... Alright, so that brings me to my next question, though. That brings me to my my next question. Do you feel like you're less success... Like, do you feel like you're less, um... Less capable of being influenced because you are an influencer? Do you feel like you're just, like... Immune to it? No. I don't, I don't think a title like that would be the reason. I think me as a person, as an individual, is my reasoning of, you know, not allowing people to influence me. I think the only time I would say that I've been influenced to do something is to join this platform. I think, um, that would really influence me. But apart from that, my views and stuff, no, I'm me, I'm different to all these guys, and 
Um, that's just my opinion on this whole uh, conversation. All right. Um, next question. Do you feel like these kids nowadays, because I know how we always love to talk about these kids nowadays, um, you know, no, with their... that doesn't sound right. <laughs> You know, with the weird issues and their dramas and whatever. No, don't take it to that weird, weird spot. Anyways, um, do you think that these kids nowadays, that they're more, um, what's the word here? Um, more easily influenced nowadays compared to the kids, like, of our generation and whatnot? Yes. I mean, look how many trends we've had, you know? It's so trends. true. TikTok trends, uh, the you, vines, you, and the ice bucket challenge, cinnamon challenge, all sorts of stuff. Like, the list just goes on and on and on. Yeah. And you ever try any of those stupid uh, challenges? No, have you? I've done the, the cinnamon challenge, but that was before it was a trend. That was before it was trend, because it was just one of those things that you would, like, you know, do amongst stupid friends before it was a trend. It was still a thing. You know, you trick a you trick yeah. a friend into like, into trying to gulp cinnamon. It don't work. Like... It don't work. It's actually very hazardous. I would not suggest doing it. More like a. Yeah, I mean, like, you convince them, or they think that they can do it, you know, you got someone who's gullible, and they're, like, wanting to prove you wrong, you're like, oh, there's no way you could swallow that. They're like, oh, yeah, I could. See, that does actually remind me of something, because don't you feel like, you know, all the things that happened back in the day, back in our time, you know, doing the silly pranks, nowadays, you can just get cancelled by that. What's your thoughts on that? I mean... You can't let the cancel culture scare you too much when you're trying to be out there on social media because if you're out there to begin with, then... I mean... You can't be scared because you're just going to be like hiding in a shell the whole time. You know, hiding in caves. You don't want to be that paranoid, delusional person. You want to just say what you have to say and you want to get it done with. And if you're going to get cancelled, try to cancel me. I'll, I'll come back. I'll come back like a phoenix, like being reborn from the ashes. I think obviously that's the correct attitude to have, but doesn't it kind of like irritate you from obviously when... You know, of course, of course, you know. but I mean, how else are we going to get things to change as a society if we don't try to um, contest the the ways, you know what I mean? If we don't try to change the ways, and if we don't try to put our views out there, then nothing's ever going to get changed. You know, we're always going to be living in that shell, living in that cave, you know what I mean, hiding away. We can't do that. Yeah. So I that's like everyone has to wake up a little bit in that sense. Yeah. But, but a lot of people are like waking up. Yeah, I'd say uh, Andrew Tate is quite a massive influence of that. But there's always been people around that who've said this kind of stuff before as well. But I think Andrew Tate is the biggest one to make something happen. <clears throat> Do you ever uh, feel like you've given off, off, like, the wrong kind of influence before? Because we're talking about, like, Andrew Tate and whatnot, and, you know, all the, like, uh, controversy around him and whatnot, so, just random question, do you ever feel like you've given off, like, a bad influence before? Then again, it's, uh, you know, it's like friends, you know? They can give you a bad influence. Oh time. yeah, peer um, pressure is like a huge thing, you know, you can't try to do anything in school without that one person being like, here, do this, or, yo, try that, or, you know, you know the saying, so, uh, I mean, if your friends jump off a bridge, are you gonna jump too? Peer pressure. No, I've never heard of that saying before. 
Oh. <laughs> quite, a, quite an interesting one. I've never heard that. Well, it's but, uh, um, it's I'm when you're about to do something stupid, basically, and you're like, oh, well, he did it. Um, then your parents would go to you and be like, oh, well, if your friends jump off a bridge, are you going to jump too? And my stupid head would be like, oh, well, oh. how deep's the water, you know? How deep is, like, you know? No, ours is, ours is a cliff. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, I've heard that one, too. Or, or the bus one as well. Yeah, no, I know what, exactly what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but let's get back to the question that you obviously uh, asked me, and uh, the simple answer is, I think everyone at times has a bad day, and they have gained some sort of negative influence. Um, but that's where, as human beings, as influences, that's just things you have to learn about, for example. Yeah, we just learn and grow. Yeah, you know, Logan Paul, you know, we've seen some of the stuff he has done. I'm not gonna know what yeah. happened, but we know what happened in Japan. And oh yeah, the, uh, the Suicide Forest video. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that video is still, it's probably up on the dark web somewhere, but yeah, it's pretty oh, messed it's up. Still... It's still yeah, up, no, like, still... damn. Yeah, no, you could legit uh, search up. Uh, no, I wouldn't suggest just... searching that up. You could even go on Google as well. Yeah. But yeah, no, definitely, you can give off the wrong impression, and you can give off the right impression, but, I mean, at the end of the, at the, the, end of the day, we're all still young, we're still learning, you know? Nobody's done learning in life, no matter how old you get, no matter, no, no matter how much you learn, you know? I mean, I feel like all of our parents have probably said this before, but, you know, or maybe just mine anyway, because I have a family of mechanics, but, um... Even though they've driven for so long, there's still so much new things that they learn each day. You know? And mm -hmm. that's something in the car industry that you can also bring to the social media platform. Yeah. Alright, off topic just a little bit. What's your biggest passion in life at this very moment? Bit of a uh, personal question there, but uh, I would have to say my passion is to be the best influence around the people that I love. That's a great thing to say. That's a, honestly, that's great. That's actually, that's very wholesome. I love that. Um, yeah. What's something that you hate about being an influencer? Like, just so something that you completely despise I think the things that you can hate is going through the rocky roads the hard times and I'm not saying progression wise I mean some of the drama that you have to go through you know yeah um, um, and sometimes honestly you feel alone when you feel like uh, obviously no one no one as a fan base cares about you and I've had this plenty of times where my fan base has done nothing for me and it's really put me in a dark place but uh, you know uh, I think that's where <clears throat> you have to have a good understanding you've got to be more uh, understanding of the situation and just try to do what's best for you um, and value yourself at the end of the day yeah. Hmm. Um, so what about you? What what would you say for you so far doing this for longer than two years? What's uh would you say has been probably a bad experience for you on your channel? Hmm. I'm not sure. I gotta think about that one for a second. Yeah, it's quite a hard question. It's true, yeah. Hmm, kind of put me on the spot there. <laughs> um, here, I'm just going to ask you another one while I'm thinking of the answer to that one, alright? 
So, uh, do you act differently off screen? And if so, give me an example of like how you do so when you act differently off screen. Something that's not too personal, like just if you want to share. Um, I think. Um, okay, that's a good one. Wow. But yeah, no. Um, so I think it's. It's quite hard, right? Because all these people, they picture you as this person on camera. And there's a lot of things that, you know, you hide, you know, away from them. Because you don't personally want them to know about your business. And I think, I think that's the hardest part is, you know, having to keep things to yourself. Even though you're fine against yourself because you want to be the most honest, you know, influencer out there. And be real with your, um audience you know? so yeah. I feel like for me that's what it is you know uh, that's what's tough for me is to have to you know not want to go into depth about your personal life you know and you want yeah. to keep that to yourself and I think that's quite a hard thing for a influencer to do um, especially because you know if I'm dealing with my personal business I've had it plenty of times by people are like oh can you stream oh can you do this and they're like bro I'm dealing with my in real life that's where I just find things can be quite challenging there you know from a uh, on camera and off camera perspective yeah I totally feel that totally feel that So do you have a answer or are yeah. you still... Yeah, you were saying earlier, I would say probably uh, it's when people change their complete view on me or it's when people completely, uh, completely like fake a view on me, you know, they'll pretend to like me and then I find out that they don't like me behind the scenes, you know what I mean? That's pretty tough yeah. sometimes. It's like, you know, someone I who you really thought liked you, turns out they don't like you. <clears throat> I think that is, it's really tough with social media because, you know, all these fans, they come around and, you know, you see them as, you know, the, the, these fans that um, care about you, but a lot of them are actually fake and it's, the hardest thing is to find out who are the real ones. Oh yeah, they're, ho they're all hiding behind screens, you know, I mean, it's, it's almost impossible to tell which ones are real, which ones are fake, and which ones are true. It's it's with time, you know what I mean? With a lot of time. And actions and decisions and that's yeah. what, you know, for me stands out the most when it comes to something like that. Yeah, totally um, agree there. So, uh... <clears throat> so, um... Obviously, regarding that um, answer, uh, would you say um, that, you know, when fans, they are not happy about the decisions you make and the drama that's caused, do you feel like that's quite a tough thing to handle? And obviously, how do you manage to, you know, handle that whole situation? Because it can be quite tougher times like this. I'm going to use a weird analogy right now, but I'm going to I'm going to compare subscribers or like fans to um, to horses. You can lead them to water, but you can't make them drink. Now you right? You can't make them enjoy your stuff. You can't make them, you know? You can try to get them to, but you can't make them. You know, you can lead them yeah. to your but you can't make them it's it's kind of like that, you know what I mean? Yeah, you can't so, use your If they want to have those kind of dramatic situations, uh, I, I, I tend to just let them figure it out themselves and they come to me whenever they, you know, mature, mature up or whatever. Hmm. I mean, I gotta agree with that. I think it's hard for a lot of influencers to do that. You know, there's been so many cases, so many scenarios where people don't handle it 
the best, and that's where I feel like from to the other influences, that's where they can try and change to do to make this into a positive platform. I definitely agree. I actually hope that this video goes like semi-viral, so then like this could get some attention in the influencing community, and like I'm hoping to influence the influencers. If that makes any sense. Yeah, because it's not just the uh, community, it's not just this whole platform, the influencers, some of them do need to work on themselves so that we can have a more positive um, and real platform, because at the moment, exactly. you know, this isn't, you know, there's a lot of things that have gone on where people are just getting cancelled and, you know, people ain't getting to say how they feel. Not just that, but people are scared to say how they feel just because of the, um, the idea of the cancel culture and the fact that, you know, that you could just lose everything in the matter of seconds, all that stuff that you've worked for, gone just like that. People are scared, and, you know? You know that, and it ruins your image on top of that. It ruins your image and it can really defame you as a person, you know, because that's what you'll be known as. Um, and that's why, I have to agree, that's why people are so scared to, you know, give their points of views out. Yeah. Hmm. I think I've almost touched on almost every one of these topics. I got a whole different list. I didn't tell you I made two lists. <laughs> Let me see here. Oh yeah, what's the best part yeah, wh of being an influencer in your opinion? Like, complete best part? Well, the Favorite best part? thing? I think, yeah. you know what? It has to be when we all are together and we're all celebrating over something small, it's not silly, but we're all happy and we're all having a good time. I feel like that is one of the best parts. Or even when, you know, you've influenced someone's life and you get comments like, oh, you're my favorite YouTuber, you've really changed my life and stuff like that. I feel like as an influencer, that would probably be you know, a big the positive point. reinforcement, yeah, yeah. It tells you that you're actually like doing your job, and you know, it makes you feel good. Yeah. Because so you always you think that you're that. doing, you always think you're doing a good job, but when somebody tells you you're doing a good job, shit hits different, you know. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna bounce that question back at you. So uh, what would you say? If to your opinion, what is positive on your channel? What would you say is a good moment for you and your channel and your friends? Just the fact of having a community, you know what I mean? Being part of something. I don't care whether or not I created that something. I just feeling like I'm part of something that matters, that's like slightly important, makes me feel good. You know what I mean? And back to what you were saying with the changing people's lives and making them feel better about themselves and all that kind of stuff. Dude, it makes my heart melt. I love it, you know? Yeah, I actually have to agree 100% when it comes to that, because, you know, um, being part of something is what a lot of people want, you know? They want to be a part of something, and, you know, when, you know, you build this massive community, you know, it really does help and change their lives and influence their life to obviously be way better than what it would have been without you, you know? Exactly. Sometimes I forget how much that I actually change people's lives at the end of the day, like, you know what I mean? It's yeah, crazy. Yeah, what gets you up in the morning. Yeah, and it's what help, helps me sleep at night. Touche, touche. Um, oh yeah, I missed this one. Uh, what's your favorite hobby? <laughs> My fa favorite hobby, um, it's a tough one. Um, I'd have you, to say You can just give me something in the past if you don't have anything now. No, it would have to be, uh, gaming. Gaming? Um, Biggest hobby? Sometimes, 
sometimes, like, obviously it's hard to game, it's hard to, like, constantly play the same game, but, you know, um, it's quite good at times, you know, when you're with your friends, uh, you have a good time, you have a good laugh, and I think that's what makes a gaming experience fun, and that's why I love that hobby. Yeah, gaming alone, honestly, it sucks. I don't know how people do it all the time. You just see people sitting there playing solos, like, all day long, just playing all alone. I don't yeah, get it. It's definitely, uh, definitely tough. But you do mm -hmm. it as well, what do you mean? I mean, that's because I have nobody to play with half the time. <laughs> yeah. I feel that. Um, I would say that my hobby would be the same thing, basically. Just gaming, listening to music. I know you're quite uh, passionate about fishing as well. Yeah, but, I mean, I wouldn't call that a hobby. No. no. Hmm. I don't do it enough for it to be a hobby. But you do get quite passionate about it, I would say. Oh yeah, it's one of my um, passions in life, I guess, would just be like, in it's one of those things that I enjoy, like my passion is enjoying life, like that's one of my biggest passions is just to enjoy life, and I love fishing. So, yeah, I mean, that's I'm what quite passionate about it. I can't wait to go fishing. That's a whole different topic, though. Let's just not go there. Because if I start talking about fishing, <laughs> I'm not going to stop. Yeah, and I'm not going to know what the hell you're all about. I don't... Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, do you ever have regrets because of an influencer? Regrets? Um, mm -hmm. Like, do you ever wish you hadn't become an influencer? If you could turn back time, like, has there ever been moments that you just wish that you could prevent that? No, because the one that got to where I am today, you know, that social influence, um, you know, helped my life. I ended up um, meeting someone, I ended up you know, have raising a family, you know, and um, I also learned so much um, in my career so far, and obviously at first I look at myself, and I find myself quite funny back in the day, you know, just raging at random stuff and just learning how to obviously improve on myself um, mm -hmm. from a lot of points of views, and I feel like if it weren't for the social media, for me starting the channel, um, I don't think I ever would have, you know, learned, but, uh, we're here, and, um, I don't have any regrets when it comes to YouTube, um, this is all a learning progress. So, uh, for you, what would you, um, do you uh, regret doing YouTube in any way? No. No. Even if it doesn't really get me nowhere, I'm just happy making people happy. Changing a few people's lives. A lot of memories have been created, right? Oh yeah, for sure. So many memories. Countless memories. Shoot, when I'm editing this video, I could throw in some, like, flashbacks or something, some cutscenes. Yeah, me freaking screaming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was gonna bring that up, but I guess I don't have to no more. I knew, I knew, <laughs> I knew where you were going with this. <laughs> I guess I don't have to. Um, Alright, now we're going into the uh, strange podcast topics. Away from the whole influencer topics. Oh, no. Alright, so, what should we start with? Hmm. Don't start with any. <laughs> What's your view on feminism? 
delete. Sorry, pardon, pardon. What'd you say? Uh, I said delete. You want to delete feminism? Uh, I'm not fine with that point of views. Do you feel like feminism has become uh, a way more aggressive than what their original movement stood for? See, I agree with, like, you know, women's pay and all that, but at the end of the day, it's got way, like you said, aggressive. And I feel like the fact that uh, it's come to this is just really disappointing because they had such a good reason to, you know, yeah. women's rights, but now they're only thinking about themselves and trying to be the dominant gender. That's the way I see it when trying to do things, and, you know, they don't think about men, um, because there's a lot of statistics, I'm not going to go into it, but there's a lot of statistics where, you know, it's not just women that do, you know, suffer, um, because at the end of the day, the thing that these feminists need to understand is life is unfair and sometimes it's just you know you're never gonna get a life where it's gonna be fair you know or there would be no such thing as just tornadoes there wouldn't be no such thing as death you know it's always something that's gonna be unfair about life you just can't change that as much as you try you, know, you can never change that amen to that <clears throat> so um so that's your take on feminism? Yeah, so what's yours? Um, well, I mean, I believe what they originally stood for was great, but now they're just becoming so aggressive with their movements and whatnot, and they don't even know what they're fighting for. You know, you got half the people fighting for one thing, and half the, half of the other people fighting for something else. Yeah. It same. used to be united, but now it's divided. You know, you got too many divided opinions within the feminist movement where they don't hold the same values anymore and they don't, sh like, share the same ideas anymore. You know what I mean? Back in yeah, whatever, I don't know the date, but back in whatever date, um, they all, like, they all had these same ideas when they were fighting for what they were fighting for, it's because they all wanted the same shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, and like, it's starting to do, you know, because these feminists and their influence, you know, their negative influence, you know, it's starting to affect other topics, for example, transgenders. Um, yeah. You know, um, I'm sorry, this podcast isn't going to like what I say about it, but it's a clear delusion. Uh, by mate forcing people to call them by what they want, you know? Yeah, um, I feel like this is society trying to divide us more so then they can get away with just controlling us. Because if they have a divided, like, population, the population's not going to be... Uh, the, like, the last thing that the population's going to want to do is break down the society that society has created. You know what I mean? Because they're all divided. Yeah, you know, is. what we have to do is well, technically just burn yeah. down this like system. Burn down the system. Yeah, no. Really, Not really like understand. literally. I'm talking metaphorically. Obviously, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, they just need uh, because this, just this, you know, this world is starting to get more soft, and you know that's not the way to go. You know. Life's tough. If you wanna, you know, if you wanna succeed in life, you gotta go through the hard times to be rewarded. You know, and I think that follows up in religion as well. You know, if you look at uh, the Quran, uh, the Bible, you know, you'll get the same sense. You know, you have to work hard. You know, you have to do all these nice things in the world to go to heaven. Um, yeah, they you know, so they reward a good man with a good life and um, with the with a good afterlife and all that by sending you to heaven and you yeah, know and that's all through hard life 
Yeah, and you gotta you gotta be good throughout that life. But yeah, that actually brings me to one of my other topics. Uh, what's your take on religion? Um, I think religion is a very, very beautiful um, thing. Uh, it can lead to destruction and corruption, which is the negative side of it. But the positive side of it is, you know, for example, I'm a very huge fan of the Islamic culture. I like what they bring to um, bring as their values. And personally, I don't believe in a religion. I, I, I don't have a take on it, basically. And simply, um, when it comes to religion, I think it's okay for other people to have opinions, but just don't, you know, rub off anyone else's, you know? Let everyone have their opinions. If it's something you don't agree with, then leave it to rest, obviously, you know? Don't speaking of, uh, to... speaking of people's, uh, <clears throat> like, opinions over religion, <clears throat> uh, what's your take on Joe Rogan believing that religions are all just cults? Well, um, that is his opinion, and maybe it isn't a opinion that a lot of us would agree with, but for me, I personally believe that a religion was made to bring hope to everyone, because the sad reality is, is when we die, that's it, you know? But that's just me, and I think um, maybe maybe um, you might get some backlash off that, but that's his opinion. And, uh, in some more aspects, I do have to agree, but also disagree. You know, um, I think religion is amazing because it can bring the best out of people, and that's why simply um, it's a tough one to like agree and disagree on kind of thing. Alright, so you yourself, you don't agree with his statements that they're all just cults? I don't agree, but I don't disagree. I understand his view and where he's coming from, but I don't, I don't agree with it, but I don't disagree with it. I'm kind of in that middle of his, uh, his opinion. You know? Okay. I do believe the festive stuff, for example, Christmas, for example, Valentine's, for example, Easter, and we could go on. I think that's a whole hoax. I personally believe that is just a way to make more money for the government. Oh yeah, big time. Uh, but, but I don't think religion as, as its own, I don't, it's like I'm in the middle of when it comes to that, because, um, you know, in a way, you've got to respect people's religions, but, you know, in a way, it can be seen as that as well. Mm -hmm. So what's your obvious uh, take on what Joe Rogan has said? Uh, I mean, that was an old Joe, Joe Rogan podcast that I was watching when he said that. I don't know if his takes are still whatever with that, but, um... I mean, I can definitely understand where he's coming from, like the way that the, um, like the construction upon these religions and then the way that they like went about things. I'm not saying maybe, I'm not saying like how things are constructed nowadays 100%, but like you gotta think the way things went down, like religions weren't always the nice religions that we see today, if, if that makes any sense. A lot of religions went through something that um, people refer to as enlightenment, where they kind of stopped the bad shit that they were doing. Because religions used to do a lot of bad shit, you know what I mean? Like, religions used to have a war general and everything. Yeah, I, I fully understand where you come from, and it's where it's very hard because... 
religion is a beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, thing, but it also has yeah, like the motion, and that's why, um, and that's why it's very hard, and a lot of people are divided by it. And, um, it's a very mm -hmm. uh, tough topic to get a good uh, answer out of that. Hmm. Yeah, I, I agree there. What's your view on the schooling system in the U, uh, UK? Like so where you're obviously, at. obviously, um, so, obviously we have two different school systems, um, and with my school system, there's a lot of these work. Um, I think it's a good system, but the issue for me is um, the way they conduct themselves. For example, we went through that really rare occasion with COVID, and they didn't do really a good job, you know. Um, yeah, I'm sure that they didn't have the precautions in place for scenarios like that, though. I mean, who would have thought of something like that anyways, you know what I mean? Yeah, but the way that they handled that situation could have been better, you know? I don't know. There, there should have been some sort of common sense in that, and they didn't really conduct themselves in the appropriate way. Um, they yeah. did ruin a lot of people's education. I mean, that's Especially globally speaking, though. That's not just affected the UK. That's, like, most places. Yeah, but obviously I'm talking about um, the UK system. Yeah. And how they're dealing with it. And I feel like they did a really bad job of adapting to a new environment that they were put in. And they did just generally... What they did is they passed a lot of people. They... What they did is they gave people their predicted grade, and that was it. They didn't even get to do their exams. Do you think that's yeah. fair? No, it's not. They didn't allow them to have a fair chance. Yeah, they cheated them out of their education, basically. Exactly. And that is where, this is why I feel like they needed to adapt better. And I also think that um, schools need to be a lot more stricter. Uh, they allow too much freedom. Um, students get to misbehave. They get to do whatever the how they want, smoke and all that. And it's where I have a strong opinion on this. But they really need to bring it back to the olden times where it was more strict. You didn't have as much freedom. And you obeyed your teacher and you worked hard. Um, and that's where my... This is where, like, generally this whole... So like, how strict do you want it to go? Like, you want it to go, like, back to when they used to smack kids with rulers and stuff? Or, like, just after that? It would be just after that. I don't think abusing someone is the right way, but I believe... Well, I mean, those teachers um, put the fear of God into those kids. You know what I mean? You gotta think about it from yeah, a teaching but standpoint. It's... Standpoint, those kids but, um, would be crowd-controlled. Yeah. But then again, it's like if you were a parent and you've seen your, t you know, a teacher smack your child, would you be okay that, with that? Nine times out of ten, you would probably say, not. Oh, that's not okay. Probably you know, not. Teachers, you know, so that's where, from my father' a point of view, it's like uh, I think this is where parents need to step up, and I believe teachers need to not be as lenient as they are. And I feel like if this was to happen, the school systems. Would <laughs> way better than what it is now. I totally agree. And that's speaking on like uh like our school systems over here. Mm hmm. Hmm. So um what you like so what so what uh, is your actual like, system? Because obviously we have different names for things, you know, for example, I have primary, secondary, uh, 
and all that. So how was, you know, being a Canadian citizen, how does your education system go? Well, I mean, it's like you start off in elementary school or um, preschool and then elementary school and then you go to middle school and then you go to high school <clears throat> and then college and university, whatever. Um, the school system's kind of like, it's okay in certain spots, not the best in other spots. Like in Quebec, for example, you have to get a 60, like 60% 60 on any test that you do it is considered a pass. Very strict. Mm -hmm. So you can't have half the answers, right? You have to have at least 10% over half the answers correct to have that test be considered a pass and that's the same thing with the exam and the same thing with the whole year so if you have um, if you have like 59 in one of your subjects then you're going to have to repeat that subject and that's in Quebec yeah and it's like you get um, like these credits basically Every time you complete um, a course, like you get like a uh, grade 9 English credit, grade 9 whatever credit, math credit, you know. And so then you need like X like... amount of credits to be able to graduate. So, um, obviously, how does your kind of thing work? Because obviously, um, I don't know if this is it, but in secondary, which I would think that's high school, um, I might be wrong. Um, well, how old would you be? To go on, uh, you would be about from the age range of 11 to about uh, 16, 15. I feel so like that would be about, like more middle school. Middle school, okay. So with, I think. Um, with that, so for us to go on to college, um, we have to get these grades. So how does, uh, what does your grades get you to? Like, do you have the grade 12. number system? So you have to get all the way to grade 12 to be able to move yeah. on to like, college. You can't just get a grade, grade 12 in Quebec, time. grade 12 in Quebec, and grade 11 in Ontario. Okay, so you actually have to move up grades, which I believe their classes were. Yeah, each year is one yeah. grade, and you have to pass each grade to advance to the next one. You start off in mm -hmm. kindergarten, which is technically zero, and then it goes to grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four, grade five, grade six. All those grades, yeah. that's elementary. One through six, elementary. That's so what we call elementary for us, school. For us, it's a bit different. So we do secondary, and you have a big test at the end, and whatever grades you get, you move on to college. That's it. You don't have to... Yeah, the exams the count for 60% of the marks um, at the end of the year. We have midterm exams, and we have end-term exams each, each year. Mm -hmm. But that's after, that's like after grade 6. That's like grade 7 all the way to grade 11 or 12. So like, um... So if you don't pass your exam, you then you don't pass your year, basically. Because mm -hmm. it counts for 60% of your mark. Does that have to be for every subject, or is it each specific subject? Each subject. Each subject. Except so. for things like art and music and gym. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so then, uh, obviously, after middle school, you go to high school. You, you, do you, uh, yeah, middle school is just that? grade middle seven school. and eight. Middle school is just mm -hmm. seven and eight, grade seven and eight, uh, eight, and then high school is nine, ten, eleven, and if you're in Quebec, then twelve. I don't know what other places oh, have so twelve. There's probably oh. other ones here. Let's see. So. You actually have to go to co college to get qualifications? What do you mean? 
uh, well, to be qualified to do certain things. Yeah. Like a certificate, yeah. Yeah, degrees and stuff. Like, if you want to be a lawyer, yeah. you have to have a law degree in all. Which you have to do after yeah, grade yeah. 11 or 12. At 11 or 12, you should be applying for colleges. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You go from college and university. Yeah. And what does university do then? Is that bachelor's and stuff? Uh, university is basically like if you want to do something that's even more advanced than what you would be doing in college. You know, something that you need right. uh, even more years. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I get what you mean. Yeah. I understand. forget the exact jobs, well, but was... university is basically just another, it's just like a fancier way of saying college. Because mm -hmm. it's like harder to get into university versus college. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, that was a quite an interesting uh, topic for sure. So... Alright. I hope you enjoyed today's broadcast. You know, we had some quite interesting topics. Uh, I hope you enjoyed me and that dude XD. And this has been your weekly views. So, yeah. Bye, guys. Bye.